Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem unique email addresses from today's leak code challenge problem. So basically we're given a list of email addresses and we want to count how many unique email addresses there are within the list that we're given and then return that number. Now how do we determine if a email address is unique? Well first of all we're told that we're given only valid email addresses where each one has a local name and a domain name. And both of these are going to be separated by the at symbol that you're probably familiar with. And it will only include the at symbol, lowercase letters, or the dot symbol, period, or dot, and the plus symbol. This example, this uh, email address has a local name, which is this part, and the domain name, which is this part. Now, we're basically told with this sentence over here that the dot character, in th if it appears anywhere in the local name, then it can be ignored. So basically, these two email addresses below, the local name in the first one has a period in it, and the second one does not have a period. But remember, we were told that period symbols in the local name can be ignored. So basically, we're told that this email address is the exact same. So if we were given a list of two email addresses that included both of these uh, email, then we would return the integer one because there's only one unique email address in this entire list of two email addresses. There's another special case with the plus symbol if it appears in the local name, which remember the local name is the first one everything before the at symbol. So if there is a plus symbol in the local name, basically everything that comes after the plus symbol can be ignored. Again, let's take a look at the example. Here, you can see that in the local name, which comes before the at symbol, there's a plus symbol. And then after the plus symbol, you can see that there's a string name. Now, remember, everything after the plus symbol, including the plus symbol, can be ignored. So pretend like this plus symbol doesn't exist and pretend like everything that came after the plus symbol up until the at symbol, pretend like that doesn't exist either. So we're left with m dot y. Now remember, dots are also ignored. Period symbols are ignored. So we're, we can erase that as well, in which case we're just left with m and y. So in our local name, we have my, then we have the at symbol, and then we have the domain name email.com. And as you can see over here, that's what the email address is. So basically, if we were given a list, assuming we were given a list with this email and this email, we want to know how many unique email addresses are within this list. We would return one because both of these are the exact same. Now, one thing you may have noticed that we can use both of these rules together. When we say both of these rules, we're referring to the plus symbol rule and the dot rule. And that's pretty obvious because we just did that, right? You can see this string had plus and it had a dot symbol and we used those rules together, to simplify that email address. So these two emails are considered duplicates. So how can we actually count the number of unique email addresses? Well, once you understand these rules, it's pretty simple. We're gonna go through every single email in the list that we are given, and we're gonna take that email and then apply these rules to it, the plus rule and the dot rule, and then simplify the email. Specifically, the local name is what's gonna be simplified because the domain name really is just gonna stay the same. And once we simplify that local name, then we're gonna take that simplified email and then store it in a hash set. Why are we choosing a hash set of all the data structures we could use? Because hash sets are going to eliminate duplicates. Because once we take a simplified, e once we take an email address, simplify it, then we can store it, right? Now, of course, we could have multiple copies of the same simplified email address, and we don't want to store duplicates because we want to count how many uniques we have. So this hash set will eliminate duplicates. Each uh, uh, email will be stored in O of one time. We have N emails. 
So the overall time complexity is going to be big O of n. Uh, you could add one more variable to it because we are going to have to parse each string that we're given. We're going to have to, you know, parse it to eliminate characters, you know, split it, do some stuff like that. So you could say n times m, where m is maybe the average size of each string that we're given. So now let's jump into the code. So like I mentioned, we're going to be having a hash set in Python. You can create that like this, or we're going to call it unique because it's going to store every unique email. Now we, of course, have to actually go through those emails simplify them and then store them in our unique hash set. So let's just iterate through each email address. Now there's many ways to code this function. Of course, you can use a lot of built-in stuff. So if we were to do that, of course, we could take the email. We know there's guaranteed to be an at symbol, right? Which is gonna separate the local and the domain name. So we can go ahead and split the string into two strings with the local coming first and the domain coming after, right? Because we know for sure this is only gonna be split into to two strings, right? It's not gonna be split into three or four or five. There's only gonna be one at symbol in the string. We know that the local name can also be split, right? It has to be simplified as well. The domain name is good, but the local needs to be simplified. Now we can remove periods and we also have to delete everything that comes after the plus sign, the first plus sign, right? So really we want everything that comes before the plus sign, right? So what we're going to do is split this with the plus sign, right? It could be split into two, three, four strings, who knows? We only want the first one. So after we split this, it's going to return a list of strings. We're going to take the zeroth one, we want to take the first one, right? Everything that comes before the first plus sign and then assign that to local. So now local has been simplified. The last thing we need to do is actually remove all the periods from local. So we can do that like this. In Python, there's a built-in function for strings called replace. We want to replace all occurrences of the dot symbol with an empty symbol. Uh, or in other words, what we're doing is basically just erasing every occurrence of this, right? That's basically what we're doing here. And now we have our simplified local string and domain string. What are we going to do? We want to add it to the set. So you can go ahead and add these two strings together, maybe even, you know, with an at symbol between them, but that's not, you know, entirely necessary. You can also just say, okay, unique dot add this pair of local and domain, right? Basically, we're doing the same thing. We're just saying this is the string, right? We can store it as a pair of values, or we could actually create, we could add these together and store the string itself. It doesn't really make a difference as long as it's unique. And once we have done that with every single email, of course, we just want to know how many unique emails there were. So we can just take the length of this hash set and then return that. And now let's just run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it works and it's pretty efficient. Now, you might consider this cheating because we just used built-in functions to solve the entire problem. Now, that's perfectly fine. What if your interviewer said, this isn't good enough, how about you solve it you know, manually? That's not too difficult either, actually. We can you know, use this kind of skeleton code still, right? This still works. All we have to do is now for each email, we have to actually iterate through every character in the email. So basically do what we did with built-in functions, but do it manually, right? Go character by character. So the first thing we want to do is simplify the local name, right? Because we know that comes first. So we're going to have an index i, which will start at the beginning of the string, and local is initially just going to be an empty string. We're going to go character by character in this email and build the local string. And how are we going to know when we should stop? Well, if we reach the at symbol, then we can stop. But what if we also reach the plus symbol before we reach the at symbol. In that case, we can also stop, right? Because we're not going to take anything after the first plus symbol. So if we reach the at symbol or the plus symbol, then we can stop. We know we built the entire local uh, string. So basically, if the email at index i is equal to either of these two values, in Python, you can say if it's in this uh, sub list, right, this little list of two values, then we can stop. So in other words, if it's not in this list, then we can continue iterating through the loop and building that local string. So we're going to take every single character and add it to the local string if it's not equal to the at symbol or equal to the plus symbol. But don't forget, remember, there could be periods or dot symbols in our email. So we don't want to add those. So basically, we're saying add every character to local if it's not equal to the dot. 
right? But if it is equal to the dot, we still want to continue the loop. It's just that we don't want to add that particular character to the local string. And regardless of what we do, we definitely want to increment our pointer each time. So once we've done all of that, we have built the local string. Now the last thing is to get the domain part of our string. So we can continue to use our pointer i, but we basically want to continue iterating i, you know, incrementing it until we know for sure we have reached the at symbol because everything after the at symbol is going to be the domain name, which is easy for us. But it could be possible that this loop stopped because not because we reached the at symbol, but because we reached the plus symbol. So we still have to potentially increment. Uh, so basically, while e of i is not equal to the at symbol, continue to increment i by one. So this loop, once this loop stops, we know for sure we reach the at symbol. So then we can build our domain by saying, okay, in our string i, we want everything after the index i. So i plus one until the end of the string. So basically we're just creating a sublist or substring with Python. Of course we could do this with a loop if we really wanted to, but I don't think that's necessary, but it's up to you. So now we have our domain, we have our local, we can do the same thing that we did in the previous solution. Just go ahead and add this pair to our unique hash set. And then the rest is the same as well. We just wanna return the length of that unique hash set. Now, once again, let's run it to make sure that it works. And it does work and you can see that yes, it's actually less efficient than the previous solution. The overall time complexity is still the same with this solution depending on how you count it, because actually adding a character to a string is actually an end time operation. So depending on how you see it, but I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like, and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon if you would like to further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.